Hi everyone, welcome to Cath Lotties. Um, this is our regular Sunday night live stream for community Pilates. Um, you don't have to, but if you'd like to make a donation to charity, I can post my PayPal um, under the video and you can donate for uh, proceeds going directly to people who are homeless um, and suffering from drug addiction in Glasgow and Falkirk and we'll make sure the money gets there to buy groceries um, or to, to give cash to people in need um, who are homeless or living in precarious situations. So we've raised 50 quid so far, which is great um, during the COVID-19 sessions. Um, this Pilates is open to anybody. So if you haven't done Pilates before, can I just ask that you make sure you clear any new exercise with your GP, uh, particularly if you have underlying health conditions or are recovering from injury. But Pilates is really open for all ages and we've got things on the Cathlotties YouTube channel uh, for all fitness levels and all ages. We've got chair Lotties if you have joint conditions. We've got Pilates with the kids. So um, go ahead and check out the YouTube, like it, subscribe it, leave a comment, let us know what you like and what you'd like more of. So to do Pilates, you don't need any special equipment. Um, it's fine if you have a mat, but a carpet will do. Uh, we will give you the option now to incorporate a stretchy band. If you don't have a band, you can also use a pair of pantyhose or uh, tights, but you don't have to. You can just use your own body weight. And because we're in week six, uh, I incorporate uh, the option to use weights at some point. If you like, you can use the little tiny dumbbells or uh, just a weight plate off your uh, fitness equipment. You can have a one kilo or two kilo weight plate nearby if you want to make things a little bit more challenging, but you don't need to. Okay, so still waiting for a few people to come online and join us, but. Um, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Today, we're going to start up against a wall. So we always start standing. Usually we start standing in the center of your mat. And if you don't have a, a clear wall, you can just go ahead and do it anywhere you like. But let's go ahead and find our Pilates principle. So for those of you new to Pilates, there's three components to your Pilates posture. So I'm going to show you my feet first. In order to get the right alignment against the wall, you want to be maybe five, six inches away from the wall, and then you want to pull your toes into a V, pull your heels into parallel, bend your knees nice and soft, and tuck your tailbone under so that it touches against the wall. Now I'm going to show you the upper body. You can have your band nearby if you want to use it, have a weight nearby if you want to use it. Your tailbone is tucked under against the wall, and then you roll your shoulders up, back, and slide them down the wall. The last thing you wanna do is the back of your head rests against the wall and just tuck that chin into the back of the neck nice and long. So we always do three things at the start of Pilates. The posture, the pelvic floor, the lateral breathing. We're gonna do them all against the wall today if you have wall space. So for the pelvic floor engagement, I want you to think about your pelvic floor as a hammock muscle from your front naughty bits to your rear naughty bits. It lifts up and in when you're stopping a pee pee or walking into a pool of cold water or thinking about someone who, uh, who you, you kind of have an interest in, uh, like Hugh Jackman or Gary Barlow or uh, Charlize Theron, Holly Berry. You feel in and up, scooping in and up and pull that belly button right up against your spine. You want to have that feeling for the whole class, okay? You wanna try for the next hour to have that feeling of the pelvic floor lifting in and up, so let's practice. Breathe in to prepare. As you breathe out, squeeze up and hollow like you're stopping a pee-pee. Pull it up and in, the belly button comes to the spine, level two. Level three, the ribs knit together, the shoulders pull down the wall and everything's nice and tight here, like I'm going to punch you in the stomach, although I'm not, and release. Let's do it again. Breathe in to prepare. Breathe out, close the pelvic floor, level one. Squeeze it up and in, level two. 
everything's nice and tight like you're Houdini. Somebody's going to punch you, punch you, punch you, and release. So I want you to hold that to level sort of between one and two for the rest of the hour. The final bit is the lateral breath. So again, your shoulders are touching the wall. Your tailbone is touching to the wall. Your back, your head's touching to the wall. Your elbows are touching to the wall. We're going to try and keep the shoulders away from the ears as we breathe deep and wide and we inhale. As we exhale, watch my fingertips draw together. So watch me inhale and they expand. And we exhale and they close. But my shoulders are not lifting up. We're breathing in like a bellows to the lower lobes of the back of the lungs. And we exhale through the mouth. Pull that pelvic floor up. Last time. So this time as you expand, widen out. And as you exhale, push the air out, using your pelvic floor and your belly button and your oblique muscles. Fingertips float to the ceiling. And then they fall out to the side. Feel that little pinch between your shoulder blade? Try and hold it there as you release the hands. So really just feel this posture against the wall. Feel the tailbone, the shoulders, the back of the neck. Try and pull the shoulders down away from the ears, but also button your ribs together. This is your Pilates posture. So that's two bits of homework for you today. Um, it's not about what you do here in this hour with me. It's about trying to take this posture out into the wider world. So if you could do those pelvic floor exercises a couple times a day and stand against a wall like this a couple times a day, you will find that your posture will improve. See to the side, I've got ear over shoulder over hip. That's your Pilates posture. Okay, if you've got the band, you can put it behind you. If you don't have a band, you don't need a band, okay? So you can just hold your, your arms like this. Roll the shoulders away from the ears. Button your vest together. Button your waist. We inhale to prepare. Exhale. Pull that pelvic floor up and squeeze the ribs together as you close the fists. Inhale. Rotate them out and feel the squeeze between your shoulder blades. Are your shoulders touching the wall? Exhale. Shoulders move away from the ears as you come to your T-shape. It's slightly in front of a T. If you wiggle your fingers, you should see it in your peripheral vision. Inhale, squeeze the elbows back in. Exhale, close the vest, zip up those jeans, fists come together. Inhale, shoulders are away from your ears, rotate them out, feel the squeeze between your shoulder blades. Exhale, shoulders go down the back to come to your T-shape. A couple more, inhale, Glue the elbows to the waist. Exhale, squeeze, zip, and hollow, and everything's nice and tight. Inhale, rotate out. Exhale to your T. Let's come back into your W. So pull your elbows back and then back to your T. Pull your elbows in, back to your T. Now we're going to move the arms up into the air. So you might want to re. Jig the band. If you don't have a band, that's fine too. But we want to be a Y. Y M C A. So pelvis is still tucked under, belly button to spine, shoulders away from the ears, but button your vest together. We're in a Y shape. Your hands are hopefully near the wall. If they can't touch the wall, that's okay if they're out here. What I really want you to do though is to keep the back of the head and the shoulders against the wall. We inhale to prepare. And as we exhale, pull the elbow straight down the wall to a W. Your, your shoulders probably don't look like mine. They might be up here, but eventually you're aiming for a W, but with your shh, best button. Inhale and exhale. Shh, shoulders pulled down and away from your ears, but you shrug up. Inhale, start to come down and exhale shh, to your W. Inhale, start to rise. Exhale, shh, Y. Inhale, exhale, W. Shh, last one. Inhale, exhale, Y. So if this is your first lesson with me, you really should watch the intro one. So hopefully this will make sense what we're about to do. I want you to lift the ribcage up, keep everything against the wall, and tilt it to the side. Oops, don't knock my painting over. Inhale as you hold, and then squeeze it and hollow and use your waist. Shh 
to pull you upright. It doesn't have to be a big move, but hopefully, eventually, everything touches the wall except your lower back. Inhale, lift the rib cage up, and exhale, the whole thing tilts to the side. Mine's a little more angle here. Stop and inhale into your armpit. Keep your VJJ tight and choose the waist to come back up. Sorry, I say VJJ. I mean pelvic floor. Inhale. I'm from New Jersey. Exhale. Lower back, tucked under, belly button to spine. Stop and inhale into your armpit. Exhale, pull it up. Do it again. Inhale. Exhale. Stop and inhale into your armpit. Squeeze up and hollow and come up right. We're going to do tiny little pulses now, okay? So we inhale, lift everything up. Exhale, tilt. The top hands, see my wiggling fingertips? They're going to go to the corner of the ceiling as we go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If you can, keep going, but stop if you want. 5, 4, 3, 2, Hold it here, shoulders are down the back, touching the wall, inhale into your armpit, squeeze it and hollow, and use the waist to straighten it back out. Other side, just so we're even. Inhale, lift the rib cage, exhale, tilt it to the side. You see the hips aren't moving, the hips are glued to the wall, and it's just these top fingers that are gonna reach for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, keep going if you can, but stop if you want. Keep going. Five, four, three, two, hold. Inhale into your armpit. Squeeze it and hollow and use the waist to come back up and release. We're going to do one last wall exercise and then we are going to come to our mat. So the last few videos, my intro video and everything, we've done a roll down, which looks like this sideways. But we've done it on our mat. We're going to actually do it against the wall. So, again, make sure that your feet are hip distance apart and they're about six inches away from the wall. If your heels are right up against the wall, you'll fall over, okay? Tuck the pelvis under. Roll the shoulders up, back, and down. Pull the belly button into the spine. We're going to inhale to prepare. As you exhale, you drop the chin to the chest, but it's still touching the wall. Then the shoulders roll up the wall and they start, your vertebrae start to peel away one by one by one. You can walk your hands down the thighs if you like, but your belly button starts to pull towards the ceiling while your head pulls towards the ground. And when you reach the bottom, shake your head yes and no, and let all the tension out yes and no. Take a deep breath into the back of the ribs, and as you exhale, pin the tailbone against the wall first. Pin the tailbone on the donkey. Then each vertebrae touches the wall one by one by one. And you can really pay attention to whether one side touches before the other. Then the shoulders slide down the wall and the back of the chin Sorry, the chin tucks in, so the back of the neck's long, and we're going to do it one more time here, then we'll move to, the, to our mat. Inhale to prepare. As you exhale, nod the chin to the chest, but keep it against the wall. Then the shoulders roll up the wall, and they start to round forward, like someone's pouring warm water over your back. And each vertebrae slides up the wall first, and then peels forward. You can walk the hands down, but your belly button starts to pull towards the ceiling and your head pulls towards the floor. And when you reach a comfortable place, nod your head yes and no. And let all the tension out. Yes and no. And then breathe into the ribs to prepare. And as we exhale, think about tucking the tailbone straight against the wall. You can walk the hands up. There's no such thing as too slow. There's only too fast. And each vertebrae restacks and finds its home. Lovely. We've had a few lovely people joining, Pam and Ava and Neil's here always. So it's so good to see you. 
So that's it for the wall. You don't need to be against the wall anymore. Hopefully you can still see me, sorry. Just like organizing my furniture a wee bit. <laughs> but we're gonna move to our mat now, which is right here. And hopefully you can see from my head to my toes, we're gonna go ahead and find our Pilates posture, but we're gonna do it side, side on if you like. So start with your feet together, pull your toes out into a V, pull your heels out into parallel. So you can put your guns on your hips and as you point them down, you should shoot off your big toe. That's how you know they're hip distance apart. Knees nice and soft, just gently tuck that tailbone under, roll the shoulders up, back and down. Sit those shoulder blades nice and flat against your spine. And we're gonna do our final roll down and walk out to four point kneeling. If you've got bad knees, you might wanna have a towel, pillow or something uh, next to you or just fold your mat over to protect your knees. Likewise, if you've got bad wrists, I'll show you what to do at the bottom. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, drop the chin to the chest. Shoulders roll up and away from your imaginary wall as each vertebrae starts to open. The belly button pulls to the ceiling, the head pulls to the ground, and when you don't have to come as far as me, but when you feel nice and comfortable and relaxed, shake your head yes and no, and let all the tension out, yes and no. And then when you're ready, you can bend your knees and walk them down to four-point kneeling. So when you're in four-point kneeling, your knees are directly under your hips. Your hands are directly under your shoulders. So you might want to go ahead and if you've got a camera, try and look in the video of yourself or look in a mirror because what we often find is we're used to doing exercise like this and see how much further my hips are in front of my knees. We want to bring them back and then bring the hands in accordingly. And peek through those knees, make sure they're about six inches apart. I'm just going to tilt this down so you can see my hands a bit better. We're going to go ahead and do a moving cat. So a lot of you have probably done a cat type pose in yoga. Sorry about this chair. So in order to do this, we start in a tabletop. For a tabletop position, pull your shoulders away from your ears and down your back, but don't let your tummy sag like this. Pull your belly button up, pull your shoulder blades down so your back is nice and flat like somebody could put a ruler on it. Then look at the floor. We don't look up. We're always looking at the floor. Squeeze that pelvic floor hammock muscle up like we taught you at the beginning. Squeeze the belly button to the spine and we inhale to prepare. As we exhale, we move to angry cat by tucking the pelvis under first, lower back heads to the ceiling, then the mid back, then spread your scapula, push into the ground and drop your head, you're an angry cat, angry, angry, inhale. Exhale, unfold the tailbone first, each vertebrae goes back, then you pull the shoulders down, now don't come into extension. Instead, feel like somebody's pulling your tailbone one way and the top of your head the other, and you're pulling your shoulder blades down your back, your abdomen's tight, you're actually working really, really hard here, okay? Let's do it one more time, inhale. Exhale, tuck the pelvis under, lower back to the sky, mid back, upper back, spread the scapula, head drops between the arms, inhale at the top. Exhale, tailbone unfolds first, shoulder blades down the back, top of the head in the opposite direction. Now, we're gonna to start to move it, okay? I'll walk you through it, but essentially we're gonna go angry cat, stretch into a child's pose, elbows bend towards the mat, nose comes along the mat, in front of your hands if you can, and then push straight up. We did it last week, so we're gonna um, do three one way, three the other, and then tiny pulses, okay? But the two things to remember, number one, your elbows are bending straight down towards the mat, but they're not resting. As soon as you've rested, you've lost it. And secondly, we're not letting the back arch here, okay? No, we're keeping it tight. So tuck that pelvis on your belly button of the spine. 
It's ramrod straight at the bottom, not curved. Let's try it. Inhale to prepare. Pull that pelvic floor up. Tuck the pelvis under. Send the back to the sky. Spread the scapula. Inhale. Exhale. Sit back towards the child's pose, but just hover. Don't rest. Exhale. Elbows bend straight towards the mat, but not on it. Nose skins in between the hands in front if you can. Push straight up. Every time without fail. Oh, sorry. That's my brother. <laughs> Let Peter handle that. <laughs> I thought it was my dad in Florida. I apologize. Hang in there with me. Peter? Can you call? Yeah. Oh, apologies for the, for the slight pause there, folks. Okay, let's do this. Moving cats. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, tuck that pelvis under, arch the back, spread the scapula, drop the head. Get back and stretch. Exhale, elbows bend straight mat. Nose comes in front of the hands if you can, and then push straight up. And you have to rock back to get into your original position. So, really remember at the bottom to squeeze your body. This is our last time in this direction. Inhale to prepare. Squeeze that with JJ. Tuck that pelvis under. Send the back to the sky. Spread your scapula. Push into the ground and drop the head. Inhale. Stretch back into your child's pose. Stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, stretch it. Exhale. Elbows bend straight down towards the mat. Nose skins a wee bit further in front if you can. And then elbows to the body as you push straight up. Rock back. We're going to reverse the position. So remember to make it easier. Don't go as far down towards the floor. You don't, your nose doesn't need to touch the mat. And also, you can just drop it, your nose in between the hands. It doesn't have to come in front. But if you bring your nose forward in front of your hands, it makes it harder. So pick your level, but really pull that pelvic floor up like you're really squeezing, like you're pulled in a peepee. Inhale, elbows bend straight back as your forehead lowers down. Exhale. Sit back towards the chest pose. Inhale, round it up. Exhale, unfold from the tailbone like we did at the start. Let's do it again. If it's too easy for you, number one, make sure your elbows are glued into your ribs. Your elbows should touch your ribs. Inhale, lower the forehead down. Exhale, sit back towards the child's pose, but don't rest. Inhale, round, or exhale, round it up. I lost the breathing and unfold the tailbone. Not my best one, let's try it again. So if it's too easy for you, bring your nose further in front of the mat, but make sure your spine is still straight. Inhale, lower the forehead down. Exhale, sit back towards the child's pose. Inhale, round it up. Exhale, unfold. Okay, so we're doing our last one now. We're gonna go back to the original direction and we're gonna hold it at the bottom for tricep pulses. You don't have to, you can take a child's pose anytime you like. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, move to angry cat. Inhale, sit back towards the child's pose. Stretch it out. Exhale, elbows bend straight down towards the mat, nose skins along the mat in front of the hands if you can and hold. Tiny pulses through the hands. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Pelvic floor squeeze, elbows to the ribs, and 5, 4, 3, 2. Hold if you can and inhale. Is your back straight? Is your pelvic floor lifted? Exhale, push straight up. And rock back. Sounds pose. If you feel in your face, it's okay. I forgot to say, not you mean. If that hurts your wrist, I think I said it last week. Roll this up. That, or use a pool noodle. Or you can actually, if you've got had wrist surgery, you can do um straight fist, but that's actually super extra hard. We usually would move into a C-shape reverse um sit up, but I think we're gonna do helicopters first today. And then we'll move to a C-shape sit-up. All right. We 
we've got Claire. Welcome, Claire. She's late. Welcome. Ooh, always here. Did you fall on your face? Julie, always here. My lovely, lovely regular. So good to see you all. Pam, of course. Lots of Gary Barlow chatter for Claire. So if you've got tight hammies, that's you, Neil. You can sit on a block or a throw pillow or a cushion. It doesn't matter. But basically, we're just because we're sitting like this, you might just need a little something under your butt if you've got tight hammies. To be honest, your legs don't even need to be straight for this because this one's the helicopter. It's really about getting the twist from the ribs, okay? So if you want to use a band or pantyhose or whatever you can, you just put it behind you. Not necessary. Just as effective without it. So shoulders move away from your ears. Hands are just in front of a T-shape. If you wiggle them, they're in your peripheral vision. Sit nice and tall on your sit bones. Inhale into the ribs to prepare. Exhale, twist. Stop and inhale, don't move. Exhale, squeeze a bit hollow and twist a bit further. Stop, inhale. Exhale, twist all the air out of you and inhale, return. So it's like you're wringing out a washcloth and what you're using to wring is your ribs, okay? So what I don't want you to do is shrink down. I want you to stay sitting nice and tall and let's try the drop the band if it's not comfortable. Wiggle your fingertips so that they're in your peripheral vision. Make sure your chin stays in the center, right in the middle of your cleavage or your chest bone. It doesn't look to the side. Inhale. The movement entirely comes from the ribs. So zip and hollow that pelvic floor and twist and hold. It doesn't have to be far. As you inhale, think about stretching up and exhale, deepen it. Hold, inhale, exhale, twist it all out. Using the ribs and return. Great job. So we're gonna do one more each side. I'm gonna get rid of the band because my shoulders are a little bit sore from body pump. <laughs> So wiggle those fingertips, they're in your peripheral vision. Inhale, sit nice and tall. Pull that JJ up, belly button of the spine and twist from the ribs. Hold, inhale, twist and deepen. Hold, inhale. Last time, squish all the air out like you're wringing a washcloth and return. Beautiful, other side, inhale. Squeeze up and hollow, shoulders away from the ears, and twist. Stop and inhale. Twist. Nice and tall, refuel. And twist it all out. Return. Good. Just while we're here, let's just do a little twist to ease off any tension. And just raise the arm up and bend the bottom arm in. And just feel a nice stretch here. Then shift your shoulder forward towards your toe and scoop along the floor to the middle and sit up. Other side, inhale, exhale, just gently. Feel the stretch there in your side. Inhale, rotate the shoulder towards me, pinky towards your foot and drag it along the floor to round the back and sit up, okay? So, now we'll move to what you were expecting if you do my class regularly, which is the C-shaped spine exercise. I do it every single week, and I think you all know why. Basically, it's the antidote for the regular crunch. You see people in the gym, and they're doing their crunches, and they're doing sit-ups like this. Look at my abdomen. Ooh, ain't nobody want to see that shape. Nobody wants to create that shape with their abdomen. So the antidote is to get your deep, deep abdominals to sit right up against your spine, okay? So you can have your knees bent or you can have your knees straight. You can use the band or you can not use the band. I think I'm going to do this one without the band. Um, you should only do this with your legs straight if you've done it before and you've done it with me before and you don't have any lower back issues. Otherwise, Roll your shoulders up, back and down, sit nice and tall on your sit bones. Level one 
is holding behind the knees. Level two is arms in front. Level three, fingertips to forehead. I'm going to start with level two, but you can move it down or up as need be. I'm going to talk you through this move. Don't worry. The most important thing is the start, okay, that we slouch down and lead from our belly button. If we start to roll from our shoulders, we're still creating that popping out of your abs. You can actually see it. You can see your six pack. <laughs> no, you can see your abdominals popping out. So inhale to prepare. Squeeze that pelvic floor up, belly button tucks to the spine, roll the pelvis under and slouch down to form a C shape with your spine first. Then leave from the belly button to roll back onto your sit bones. Doesn't have to, or your tailbone, doesn't have to be far, okay? Inhale into your ribs. Exhale, twist to face me. Shh, pull the front arm back. In your return. Exhale away. Shh, twisting from the ribs. In our return. Do it again. Shh, in our return. Exhale away. Shh, in our return. Now we're going to bring the forehead over the knees, increase the C shape. And scoop through shoulders down the back to sit tall. So if you felt like that was um, too easy, bring your fingertips to your forehead. In fact, that's what I'll do now. But if you're new to Pilates, you can always go here and just twist like this, okay? If it's too much for you. What you do need to do is keep your belly button against your spine the whole time. Roll the shoulder. Ah, if you want even, even more challenge, you can add weights. Add weights instead of a band. Sit nice and tall. Actually, I'm going to stay at level two. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, squeeze up and hollow and roll the pelvis under first. Belly button leads towards the ground. Start where your tailbone's on the ground. Inhale into your ribs. Twist from the ribs to face mid. Hips don't move. Nice and stable. Inhale, return. Exhale away. Inhale, return. Do it again. Inhale, return. Add away. Inhale, return. If you've got one more in you, come with me. Bring the forehead over the knees, scoop through, and sit tall. Yay! And now we're going to roll down, however comfortable, onto our back. Okie dokie. Roll, rock your pelvis a wee bit until it feels comfortable. Your tailbone is on the ground. Your rib cage is on the ground, but you should be able to wiggle your fingertips under your lower back, just a teeny tiny little gap, and that is called your neutral spine. So I want you to think about engaging like we did at the beginning, but don't press into your fingertips. So we're basically trying to shorten the transverse abdominis, but more importantly, the rectus abdominis, the big, great, big, long muscle. Shorten it without tilting the pelvis at all. Fuck you through it. Inhale to prepare. Exhale. Hold that PB. Pull the pelvic floor up. Belly button to the spine. Ribs knit together. It's nice and tight like I am going to punch you in the abdomen, but don't press into your fingertips. Release. Good. Inhale. As you inhale, practice the lateral breathing. Try and feel the breath moving out into your lungs and spreading out along the mat. So inhale into the lungs, not the shoulders. Exhale. Pull that pelvic floor up, belly button to spine, ribs knit together, nice and tight, and release. So on this last one again, shoulders are away from the ears. They don't shrug up. We inhale, breathe deep and wide and expand. Belly button still tight. Exhale. Belly button's tighter. Everything's tight, but do not press into your fingertips. Release. So hold that position. Fingertips on hips and thumbs on ribs. Okay? This is your golden square, and we don't want it to move. So we're going to go ahead. And inhale to prepare. Squeeze up and hollow. Nothing moves as we float one leg to 90 degrees. When it gets up there, put your fingertips on your knee. 
and it should sit right down in your sit bones. So if you can't do that, you've stopped too early, you've stopped here. Again, most exercises you might, but we want it to sit right nice in your sit bone. Check your shin, is it up here or is it parallel to the floor? Inhale, don't let that move at all as we exhale and slowly, slowly lower it down. Note, I've kept the angle at my knee as well. My, my toe hasn't flopped, okay? So again, slower is better. Inhale to prepare. Don't let your hips move as you float the opposite leg to 90 degrees. Fingertips on the knee to just let it sit. Nice and down into your hip. Inhale, squeeze hip and hollow and let it float back down. All right, so now we're gonna practice the imprint. For the imprint, I want you to bring your hips and ribs closer together. Inhale to prepare. As you exhale, use the pelvic floor to bring your hips and ribs an inch closer together. Your lower back goes towards the floor, but it doesn't jam into the lower floor, and then release. When we take the second leg off the ground, I'll tell you to imprint your spine. So let's practice it one last time. Inhale to prepare. Don't squeeze your buttocks or press into your heels. Just use your pelvic floor and your belly button to pull your ribs and your hips one inch closer together. Release. So inhale to prepare. Keep a neutral spine as you exhale and float one leg to 90 degrees. Stop at the top and inhale. Squeeze up and hollow and imprint as you bring the second one off the floor to meet it, okay? So you can touch your knees and make sure they're 90 degrees. We have the option now to add the upper body but you don't have to. If you want to, we inhale to prepare. Exhale, squeeze the and hollow, nod the chin to the chest, and roll the shoulders towards the hips as you come to your float. Inhale at the side, looking between your knees, and we exhale, slowly lower down and grow an inch taller. So if you feel your hips and your pelvis, squeeze them into the imprint, Inhale to prepare, exhale, nod the chin to the chest, and roll up. If it doesn't feel comfortable, you can place some fingertips lightly behind your neck, but you don't have to. Inhale, and slowly, we just never pull on the neck. We keep it in a nice, strong position, tucked in. Last time, if you don't want to incorporate the upper body, you don't have to, because we're gonna do some toe taps. So release the upper body at any time. Inhale to prepare. Exhale. Roll up if you like, or leave the upper body down. The shoulders are away from the ears, and we're going to do toe taps. So touch your toe down, and exhale up. Inhale down. Exhale up. Watch the angle at my knee. I'm not losing the angle. The whole knee moves down and back up. And down and a couple more. Down and down and last one. Other foot. Hold it here. Belly button's flat. Everything's nice and flat. Inhale and slowly lower and hug the knees in. So that should have felt quite intense. If it didn't, you probably need to watch the intro video and work up slowly because it's all about when you breathe out, thinking about the abdomen flattening. And that's the shape we want even when we have our arms and legs raised, okay? So, other also, look at my leg. Some people will drop the angle of the knee, you see? My, my thigh isn't moving at all, so that's just blatantly cheating. You want the whole lever to move out, okay? So make absolutely sure that you're not losing the angle at the knee. Okay, we're gonna do a couple bridges, but we're not gonna go particularly high, okay? But it's a good precursor to what we'll do next week. Hands on the ground, shoulders away from the ears, I want you to, again, try to keep the buttocks nice and loose. We try not to engage too much of the gladius maximus. When we do our buttock engagement, 
which we sometimes do with our functional squats or with our sideline series, we're working the, or the standing toe slides, we're working the gluteus minimus, okay? We want to switch off the great big giant muscles that normally work in a fitness class or running or body pump or body combat. We want to switch those muscles off and switch on the tiny, tiny muscles that support our joints and hold our belly in. Inhale to prepare and hold our pee pee in so we don't pee ourselves when we laugh. Inhale to prepare. Squeeze that JJ up, belly button to spine. T roll the pelvis under, send the lower back towards the floor. Now you can start to peel each vertebrae up off the ground using your heels. Now your buttocks can engage at the top. You don't want to roll any higher than your shoulders. And in fact, you don't have to come this high at all. But if you do come this high, we're aiming for a straight line. Inhale. Exhale slowly, slowly. Like you're laying a string of pearls on the table. Lower each vertebrae right back where it was. And at the end, we sort of unfold the pubic bone. So we hit that neutral spine again. We don't arch, but it's a neutral spine. Hands by your side. Let's do it again. Inhale. Squeeze the and hollow, pelvic floor up, belly button to spine, roll the pelvis under, lower back to the floor, then start to gently peel it up like you're picking a string of pearls up off a table, no higher than your shoulders, if that's okay. Inhale, option to float the arms and place them above your head. You don't have to, though. Exhale, leave them there, and again, think of each vertebrae touching down one by one by one. And finally, rolling onto your tailbone so that you're in your neutral spine, and then we can float the hands back down. So we're actually creating length and space when we do Pilates. We're actually growing taller because we're letting the discs expand. We're finding, we're working against gravity. We're using our own body to find its natural postural alignment. Last time, inhale to prepare. Exhale, hold the pelvic floor up. Shh, roll those hips towards the ribs using our abdominals. Now you can put the weight in the heel as we start to peel the vertebrae up one by one. Come to where you feel comfortable, but no higher than the shoulders, eventually aiming for a straight line. Inhale, option to float the arms above the head, but you don't have to. Leave them here if you did. And as we exhale, oops, sorry, we're going to do something at the top first. Exhale and lift one heel up. Shh. Inhale, place it down. Exhale, other heel. Shh. Inhale, place it down. Do it again. Exhale. Shh. Or you can just hold and engage. Place it down. Last one. Shh. Place it down. And then inhale to prepare. And start to roll down the vertebrae, keep the pelvis tucked under, and each vertebrae finds its home. And float the arms down. That felt lovely to me. I don't know about you. Hug the knees in, ease it off, and roll onto your bed. Ah. <laughs> Uta did not fall on her face earlier, so that is also a victory. <laughs> Wonderful. So we still have a good 15 minutes, which is lovely, but the good news is we just are going to do something on our bellies, okay? And then after that, we're going to do our sideline series, and then we're finished. So what to do on our bellies, though, eh? Ooh. I wonder what we should do. Should we do swimming? We haven't actually done swimming before. Let's do a couple baby cobras just to warm up, and then we'll do swimming, which I haven't done in a while. So before we start anything, when we do our mat work on our bellies, our legs are at the outside of our mat, and I want you to think about your pubic bone headed towards the mat and your hip bones headed towards the mat, but your belly button is headed towards the sky, towards the ceiling. Like somebody's going to try and drive a tiny car underneath your abdomen. Your shoulders are out to the side, but they're pulled down and away from your ears, your hands in front of your shoulders. And to do a Pilates Cobra, it's 
a very, very tiny move, okay? It's not like a yoga cobra. So it looks like this. I'll talk you through it in a minute, but literally, if you watch me, this. My chin is tucked in, the back of my neck's long. I'm looking at the mat, I'm not looking up, and then I lower down, okay? So everybody, forehead on the mat, pelvic floor lifted, inhale into the back of the ribs. Exhale, pull the shoulders away from the ears, the nose comes an inch along the mat, and then you pull the shoulder blades down your back to come to a hover. Leave your hands on the floor for now. Tuck the chin in, inhale. And as you exhale, pull on the floor and try and grow an inch taller as you lower down. You might even feel your back evening out because you might be more to one side or the other. Let's do it again. Hands down the ground, inhale to prepare. Exhale, pelvic floor comes up, shoulders pull down the back, nose comes along the mat, squeeze up and hollow, pubic bone headed towards the mat, shoulders away from the ears, and hover. Inhale, exhale, pull on the ground and try and grow an inch taller. Last one. Inhale to prepare. Squeeze up and hollow and send the nose along the mat, shoulders pull away from the ears, come to your hover. Option then to pull the hands off the ground and move into that W shape we had against the wall. Inhale at the top, chin tucked in, back of the neck long, and exhale slowly, lower, lower, lower. We're going to do a tiny one more cobra. We're going to have a tiny challenge at the top. We're going to try and lift the hands if you want, or you can leave the hands on the ground. We're going to move the whole body to the left and to the right, okay? So if you do have a W shape here, the whole thing moves left and right, kind of like searching for coral, but much, much smaller. I'll talk you through it. Forehead on the ground, inhale to prepare. Exhale, nose moves along the mat, shoulders pull down, squeeze up and hollow and come up to your hover. Then lift the hands if you like into your W. Chin tucked in, inhale to prepare. Exhale, bring the whole W and curve it towards one side. Inhale, straighten out. Exhale, other way. Straighten out. So do it again. The whole W moves towards one hip. Straighten it out, all in one plane, and do it again. Straighten it out. And then grow an inch taller as you lower down. If that hurts your lower back, leave the hands on the ground. Okay? But that was a fun one. I like that one. Now we're going to move to swimming. So extend your arms above your head your toes are still at the edge of your mat option to lift only the upper body only the lower body or both okay so i'll show you what the lower body looks like inhale you can do it with me if you like inhale to prepare exhale both legs lift long away up and towards each other but not closed and release upper body we'll do now upper body Stretch forward, nose moves along the mat, shoulder blades pull down to come to your hover just like your cobra. Inhale and grow long. If you want to do one or the other, that's fine. If you've got a lower back issue, I would leave the legs down. We're going to swim at the top. It looks silly. It looks like this. <laughs> okay? And we're going to do a silly Pilates breathing. Just have a go. Try not to judge yourself. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, the legs stretch away, the arms stretch away, and pull the shoulder blades down the back to come to your hover. Inhale into your armpits to prepare, and we start swimming as you exhale. Then we're breathing in, two, three, four, five, and out, two, three, four, five. Swimming, 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 exhale, 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 exhale. Last time, two, three, four, five, and out, two, three, four, five, I lied, two, three, four, five, again, two, three, four, five, last one. Hold it here, stretch it long, that was not my best swimming, inhale into your armpits, and slowly release it down. I didn't realize how hard it would be to count and swim and breathe. <laughs> But you get the idea. You just have that feeling 
like you're swimming in the water, but your core is doing all the work. That's all right. We can, we can improve it next week. It was our first shot. Let's go ahead and lie on our side. And I think we are going to do open books this week because I'm needing it. So what you need is a pillow, towel, sweatshirt, foam block, doesn't matter, anything that goes under your hands. If you want to incorporate the band, you can. You can hold it in between your hands if you want to incorporate the band, but you don't have to. So we're just going to open the book. It's very, very simple. But before we do that, I want you to pull your top shoulder away from your ear. Think about your waist pulling in and up into the air and somebody stakes a metal spike through your hips so they're one on top of the other. Got something under your head because both arms are extended out in front of you on top of each other. Inhale, slide your top fingers along the floor. Exhale, open the book slowly. Your eye gaze follows your fingertips. Your hips stay facing forward, but your upper body opens. Just stop where you feel comfortable and inhale into your armpit. To close the book, think about buttoning your vest together and then start to reach, 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 reach towards me like I'm pulling your scapula and you touch down further than where you left the floor and then you restack. You can go slower than me, but never faster. Inhale, slide the top fingers away when you're ready. Exhale, squeezing the belly button to the spine. Our eye gaze follows the fingertips as we open our book. Stop in your feel when you're ready. Squeeze up and hollow and button the vest first. Then start to reach towards me. Extend that scapula. Touch down and re-stack. Last time. Inhale, slide the top fingers away. Exhale. Open that book. Stop where you feel like your hips might roll backwards and refill into your outer armpit. Think about buttoning the ribs together first. Belly button pulls the wall. Then start to think of extending the scapula towards me and touching down further than you've reached before. And then you restack. And then now we're going to take our arms nice and long from our fingers all the way to our toes. If you're getting a little bit bored of this, next week we might start to give the option to progress, but the progression looks like this. You do the whole sideline series like this. Now, the problem with this is you can start like this, but as soon as your hips start to dip, you have to lower it down. So if you want to try the sideline series like that, maybe wait until next week would be my advice because you it's a lot harder than it actually looks. You've got to have You've got to be ready for it. Uh, maybe actually if you're ready to do that, join my Wednesday classes into yoga so I can watch you. <laughs> okay, so pull the shoulder blade away from your ear. Belly button in and up, like somebody's going to hoist your waist into the air and the hips are stacked right on top of each other. If you need more stability, put the hand in front of you and bend the underneath leg to 90 degrees. But if you're quite stable, you can put your fingertips about an inch in front of your hip and an inch lower down. You can actually feel these lower ab muscles working. As we point the toe, think of it lifting away, not up, just above hip height. Then think about resisting and flexing the foot back towards you using these abdominal muscles and then crushing a coat can into the ground. Point that toe. Think of it lifting away, not up. Then think about resisting the toe back first and then exhale, shh, crush it down. Point the toe, inhale and lift. Flex it with your abdominals and shh, crush. Couple more. Point the toe, inhale and lift. Flex it, crush it down. Two more. Point the toe. Flex. It's almost two separate movements. Last one. Point the toe. Inhale and lift. And now your whole leg is going to become a pencil. So 
Don't wiggle your ankle or your knee, just movements from the hip as we draw tiny circles on the wall, like this. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Other way, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Hold it here. If you can bring the bottom leg up to meet it, please do so, and then float them both down. You might want to put the hand in front of you. Top leg comes up. If you can, the bottom leg comes towards it, and you float them both down. If it hurts your hip, you can put a towel underneath, top one up, bottom leg meets it, float them down, last one. Top leg up, bottom leg meets it. Teeny tiny little scissors. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Hold it here, extend them both away from you and up. If you can, tuck the pelvis under, belly button to the spine, inhale to prepare and exhale. Shh, increase that engagement. Last time, inhale, increase. Shh, and release it down. Bend and grow. So again, on my Wednesday class, we kind of progress that move a wee bit. If that didn't feel comfortable, keep the lift and lowers. Do what you like. It should never feel popping or stabbing. It should feel burning. A little lactic acid burn, but that's it. Here's the good news. Other side, and we're done. So be sure to have some water if you need it. Get some air in the room. I haven't really used the weight at all much today, but you can use it on the open books. You can use it on that pelvic floor, uh, the scissors, and the scissor engagement. Um, Maybe next week we'll incorporate more weights as we start to progress because this is week six. Got half a dozen under your belt if you've done them all. If you haven't done them all, check out Catalogies on YouTube and do the ones you missed. Other side. So we're on our side. It's almost like not recovery position. I forget what this position is called, but your feet are in line with your hips, are in line with your shoulders. So it's sort of a 45 degree angle there. Pull your shoulder away from your ears and think about your waist lifting in and being hoisted up into the air. And at the same time, somebody stakes your hips so that they have to face forward. They can never roll back. And this is our position. If you want to incorporate a stretchy band, hold it in between your hands, but you don't have to. Inhale, slide the fingertips towards me along the floor. Exhale, eye gaze follows the fingertips as you paint a rainbow across the sky. And open that book. Stop where your hips feel like they might roll back and inhale. Exhale. Shh, close the ribs first. Belly button to the back wall. Knees press together and then reach, 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 reach to touch down and then restack. Inhale. Slide the fingertips away first. Exhale. Shh, eye gaze follows the fingertips as you open that book. Feels wonderful. The hips face forward. Stop and inhale. Exhale. Button the vest. Belly button to the back wall. Knees press together. Reach, 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 reach. And restack. Last time. Inhale. Slide the fingertips away. Exhale. Open that book. Stop and inhale. Exhale, button the vest. Belly button to the back wall. Knees press together. And then start to reach further than you've ever reached before to touch down and restack. Again, slower is fine. Faster is not fine. You can remove the block or leave the block, whatever you want. But we've got a nice long line from our fingers all the way to our toes. You can have a sweatshirt or a towel here, but we, we don't want this, okay? We never do this position because in Pilates, we always want the neck to be sort of like nicely in line with the spine. So you pull that top shoulder away from the ears again and think of the waist lifting in and up into the air. And at the same time, somebody has staked those hips into the ground. So this is the most advanced with your fingertips in front of your head. But if you need more stability at any time, drop the hand or even Bend the underneath leg to 90 degrees. Listen to your body, okay? But the belly button stays tight as we inhale to point the toe along and lift just above hip height. Then we flex the toe back towards us with our abdomen and we 
Effortfully cross your coat can between your ankles. Point the toe, inhale and lift it long. Flex it back towards us with our JJ and shh, yeah, your inner thigh crushes down. Point the toe, flex it. Two moves almost. Point the toe, flex it. Can you feel that muscle? You can put your fingertips on your ribs too. Inhale. And as you flex, can you engage so hard that you feel it under your fingertips? Yes, I know. We all have like a little extra in there. <laughs> my, my cushion is increasing during this isolation. Point the toe. Inhale, lift away. And now our entire leg becomes a pencil. Tiny movements from the hip. If you wiggle your ankle, you're cheating. If you move your knee, you're cheating. So we go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Other way to 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold it here, and if you can, you can put your hand down if you like. The bottom leg comes up to meet it, and you float them both down. So the top leg extends away first, then the bottom leg comes towards it, and you float them both down. If it's not comfortable, just do lift and lowers, but top leg can come up and and float down. Last one. Top leg's up. Bottom leg meets it. Teeny tiny little scissors. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold them together and lift if you can. Inhale here. Exhale. Just lift them further away and increase that engagement if you can. You can keep your hand down or up. Last time. Inhale. And shh, away and up. Tuck the pelvis under, belly button to the spine, and pull them away and up and release. Bend. Rub. Good, bad, better or worse than previous weeks, I don't know. So go ahead and just hit a child's pose for a brief moment. Or whatever is comfortable for you. Stretch it out. And we're going to go ahead and roll to standing just like we did at the start, if that's okay. I like to tuck my toes under first and send my weight. I send my Achilles heels towards the floor, but you don't have to. And then I open up my toes. If this doesn't feel good on your knees, just keep in your child's pose. But I like to wake my feet up and say thank you because they do a lot for us walking around. Especially if you can send the heels towards the ground here before you start to roll up. So we're going to roll up just like we did at the beginning. So the knees are soft. Shake your head yes and no. All the tension out. Yes and no. And then breathe deep and wide into the back of the lungs. And I want you to think about you can walk the fingers up the legs, but you must tuck that pelvis under first completely before we put any vertebrae on top of it. And the abs are tight against your spine. Chin stays heavy against the chest. You can go as slow as you like. But when you get to the top, your shoulder blades melt down the back like they did at the start. And then the back of your head floats up to the ceiling like somebody's got balloons on the back of your head and it's floating up. And then when you're ready, turn and face me. I want to take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, Shoulder blades melt down the back, and you actually feel like you grow an inch taller. So just inhale it up. And as you exhale, think about those shoulder blades just falling out and opening up the chest, and you float to the ceiling last time. Breathe in. Give yourself a round of applause. This was sort of a different one we did today. If it was your first one, it might have been harder to follow. Um, so maybe go ahead and practice some of the other ones, but thank you all for joining me. Any questions or comments, I'll hang out on here for a while. I'll end the video, but I'll check my chat. I'll check the chat under the video, and this will be on YouTube, so you can do them as many times as you want. Thank you so much for joining me. Happy Sunday.
take care, be safe, and try and incorporate everything we've done here into the way that you sit, stand, walk, take it out into the real world, take it into the way that you get up out of bed in the morning or stand up out of your chair, do your pelvic floor and your postural engagements during adverts or the Spotify adverts or uh, while you're waiting for the dinner bell to ding, you know, just get into the habit of incorporating the posture, the power and the breathing into everything you do and all the exercises that you do, all the exercises that you love. This can help you maintain your joint integrity so that you can do the other things that you really love like ballet or jogging or weights. You know, I know Pilates isn't everybody's you know, zen, but it's it's quite technique-y. But it can really make a difference to how your joints work and it can keep you playing football or horseback riding or doing all these lovely things that you love to do longer, you know, as we age. It, it really can, and also it will make you look better in a swimsuit, so there's that. Okay, love you all, happy Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.